In this short tutorial, I'll be showing you how to effectively recover blown out skin texture using a combination of multiple raw processing and frequency separation. Hey there, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to quickly show you how I typically uh, recover skin texture in areas that are uh, overexposed or blown out. And um, obviously, uh, the best way to fix this is to avoid it in the first place, which is what I'm pretty careful about doing these days. So I had to kind of dig into my back catalog and try and find a raw image that would actually work for this example. Um, but every now and then it does happen. Sometimes it's just hard to avoid it. Uh, as long as you have enough uh, data in your raw file to kind of get some sort of information back, then generally we can really improve the situation as far as the skin texture goes. Uh, again, there's an article I have on F-stoppers on shooting tethered, and that will kind of help to explain why uh, it's a good idea to shoot tethered, because then you can check these kinds of things as you're shooting uh, to make sure that you actually have enough detail there to get it back uh, when you get it back to the studio and you start working on your images. So what we can usually do, you know, to try and get back information out of blown out highlights or shadows is to use these shadow and highlight sliders. The problem with that is that if we take this down here, the whole image starts to flatten out and we start to lose some of the highlights that we actually want there because those highlights help to create dimension in the face. I mean, ultimately, you know, this has a lot more depth and it just has a, a much more pleasing feeling than something really flat like this. So what we're going to do is try and um, take the best of both of these and recover the texture out of this, but just keep... Uh, the actual, you know, tonal information out of the original image. So for that, we're going to use frequency separation. And basically what we're going to do is um, the process is pretty simple. So we're going to open up this raw file here, and I'm just going to say open as a smart object in Photoshop. And what that's going to allow me to do is just to manipulate this separately using Adobe Camera Raw. Now, you can also use a separate virtual copy inside of Lightroom if you prefer. If you're using uh, Capture One, which is what I use for my raw processing nowadays, uh, then you can create something called a variant, and in the variant, we're going to recover uh, the information. But in this case, uh, you know, I, I think most of you are probably using Lightroom and Camera Raw, so uh, I'll just use that for the purpose of this demonstration. So basically, what we're going to do first off is we're going to right-click this and we're going to say New Smart Object via Copy. And then we're going to double click on this. And now the reason you have to use new smart object via copy and not just Commander Control J is that uh, we want to have a separate smart object reference. We don't want to create a duplicate of the original smart object. So make sure you use smart object via copy. So we're going to double click on this and that's going to open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. And what we're basically going to do here is we're going to take our highlight slider all the way down. And we're going to also kind of adjust our exposure slider a little bit here. So maybe we'll take it, um, you know, a 15th down as well, just to try and pull out a little bit more of that information. So we click OK there, and uh, obviously, as I said, the image is not going to look terribly good, but we're going to make it look good. So we don't want to just kind of, you know, mask this in and mask in this area, because again, we're going to be flattening it out, and we're going to be using the color and texture, which we don't really want. We just want the texture itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just uh, essentially do uh, frequency separation on top of this. So um, I'm going to do it once manually and then I'm going to use an action for frequency separation because uh, there's a million videos out there on frequency separation and it's just really boring to watch every time. So um, we're going to just rasterize this layer here and I'm going to duplicate this out and we'll call this one uh, low and this one here is going to be our high. So basically it's just the standard you know frequency separation uh, procedure here. So in the low, we are going to blur it. So we gotta um, you know, pick an appropriate blur amount. So before we actually go into here, let's just zoom in a little bit so we can actually see our texture. So in here now, we're at about 50%. And so we're gonna go into Gaussian blur. And um, as a blur radius, what I wanna do is I wanna just pick something that's gonna blur out the finer texture, but um, is gonna leave some of these larger pores intact because I don't really care about recovering those. In fact, we're probably gonna you know, do some um, micro dodging and burning to minimize those and, and make everything look really nice as we go through the edit. So I think, you know, here probably around five to six pixels, I think will be a reasonable amount. Um, let's just go in the middle and say 5.5. And again, this will depend on the size of your image, how you know large your subject is in the frame and lots of other things. So don't go by this number, just try and find a number where, uh, you know, the fine texture has been blurred out, but some of these larger pores are, are still showing. 
So we're going to go to the hide layer now, and uh, we're going to go to image, apply image. And again, standard kind of um, approach here. I'm not going to kind of mention these values here because ultimately, um, again, you can read these values out. There's a ton of articles on frequency separation. So I assume that you're familiar with it at this point. We're going to click OK here, and then we're going to set this one to linear light. So basically between, you know, these two things, um, we've just gotten back to the original, um, what we had essentially with the one recovered uh, image. Now what we really need is just this. So you know what, I'm gonna call this recovery. Just so I can remember that it's the recovery layer that we're actually gonna use. So let's just bring that up to the top. Let's just close that down, disable that. And now I'm actually gonna use uh, an action for frequency separation, because I don't think you wanna watch me do all that again. So I'm just gonna pick this um, action that I have here. And uh, again, just make sure you you know keep the same radius, don't change it. So we're gonna stick to 5.5. All right, so we basically got frequency separation here. Now we've got this extra um, high copy, which is like a backup of our high layer. Uh, you know, if it confuses you, let's just get rid of it for now because we won't be using it in this case. Uh, we will be using this recovery though. So if we, take this layer, let's bring it down. We have a couple of different ways that we can utilize uh, this recovery object here. So I'll show you the different approaches that you can take. Now, one thing that you can do is um, we can just clip this down. So we're gonna hold the Option or Alt key and then just hover in between them. And then we're gonna clip it down. Now, if we turn it on, um, we want to obviously change the blend mode here. Let's just change it to normal. And uh, make sure you set it to normal. Otherwise you see what happens, it just goes crazy. Uh, but if we toggle that on and off, especially if we zoom in here, let's just get to 100%, you can see just how much uh, of that texture we've actually recovered out of that recovery file, but we have kept, you know, the highlight structure uh, in place. So definitely, you know, making a lot of progress there as far as that goes. Now you don't want to use this entire image as is, or I should say this entire layer as is, because it actually makes the shadow areas look worse. So if you actually look at uh, some of the detail in something like the brows here, what it's doing is it's flattening out some of the micro highlights that we have in here, and it's actually gonna make that look like it's less sharp. So you don't wanna use it everywhere. You only wanna brush this into areas that have highlights. So for example, over here in the nose, if we turn that on, you can just see how much more detail we're getting back out of that area. Now, um, that's one approach. Now, if you find that, you know, this is looking great, but then everything else looks kind of maybe around it, it looks a little too soft, what we can do is we can unclip this. And at this point, we're going to set it to uh, linear light again. And now obviously here we're actually doubling up the sharpening effect, which we don't really want. So what I would recommend you do is let's go ahead and make a selection. Let's say I want to just, you know, I kind of like the sharpening it's doing around the edges of the, the forehead here. So I'm going to basically select out just that area. So let's just grab something like this. And then I'm going to hit Q for a quick mask and let's just blur this out a little bit. So going to Gaussian blur, I'm just going to apply maybe you know, like 30 pixels of blur or something like that. That's just gonna feather our selection for us. And we're gonna now add a mask. So let's just mask that in. And so everything else is excluded except for this area in here. Now, what I also wanna do is I wanna just kinda tame down uh, the sharpening here, cause now it's just way too much. I think, you know, we don't really need that much texture cause ultimately we have to, you know, heal a couple of areas here and then we're probably gonna micro dodge and burn this to make the texture a little bit, you know, smoother and cleaner. But at least we have some detailed information that we can work off of now. So I'm just gonna grab my brush tool and um, at around probably 2% or so, maybe let's say 5%, uh, I'm just gonna brush in a little bit of black here just to kind of take this down a tiny bit because I think it's, like I said, just a bit too much for us now. So I'm just gonna take it down until I think it looks pretty good. Let's see how that's looking. I think that's not too bad and I'm actually gonna take the overall opacity down to maybe 70% or something like that. There we go. And so if you think that, you know, now I've actually masked out a little too much, which maybe I have, I'm just going to kind of paint a little bit more back in. So something like that. So let's say we're happy with that. Um, the other thing I would do is try and maybe bring back a little bit of color in there. So using our layer in between our low and our high layers, we're just going to brush in a little bit of skin tone. So for that, we're just going to grab, you know, a reasonable size brush, something like this. And we're just going to grab some of the skin tone that is kind of around our highlight. And we're just going to gently sort of paint that in. So just gonna let that blend throughout our um, our highlight area. So just kind of sample around and paint in. It may look like we're not really doing much here, but uh, 
you will see that it looks quite different once we actually toggle this on and off. So something like that. So at least now we have we have detail and we have some tone in there. It just doesn't look like, you know, one large white blob, essentially. Uh, and this is going to form sort of the basis of the rest of our retouching. So, you know, on top of this, we're going to do our standard uh, frequency separation blending, maybe. We're going to be doing a lot of dodging and burning, things of that nature. And if you want to see all that kind of stuff, um, shameless plug here, do check out my um, full-length fashion and beauty retouching tutorial, uh, the link to which will show up down here below. Um, would definitely appreciate you checking that out. Uh, so if we zoom out a little bit here, let's go ahead and toggle this on and off. You can see where we're at now. We have a lot more detail there. You could argue that maybe we have a little bit too much detail even now. So again, you can kind of just play with uh, the opacity of this and uh, kind of get it to a, a place that you're happy with. Now that we have it um, in, in sort of an area that, that I think I like, I think I can build the rest of my retouching on, we're just going to stamp this out and um, hit Command Option Shift E for that. And now we can get rid of all of this extra stuff that we no longer need and essentially do all of our retouching off of that. So again, kind of zooming into 100% here, toggling on and off. You can just see how much more detail we get back there. And again, we're not doing it by, you know, sort of sacrificing uh, a lot of the, uh, the tones that were there, a lot of that tonal information, a lot of the depth in the highlights. Um, we're kind of maintaining that, but really grabbing the stuff that we really need out of that recovered file, which is uh, the skin texture itself. So... Obviously, the uh, you know your ability to get effective results here will depend on the camera you use. Uh, if you're using an old camera that doesn't have a whole ton of dynamic range, you may not be able to get it out. Or if it's completely blown out, where you know the value there is essentially 255 across the board on on your RGB uh, info panel here, uh, then again you may have a little bit of trouble. But as long as there is some detail there, um, just pull those sliders as much as you can and try and just recover uh, the texture individually. So I do hope you found that useful. Uh, again, be sure to check out our full fashion photography and retouching tutorial in the link below where we'll cover full beauty retouching workflows, portrait workflows, uh, and lots more. And also make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel below so you get future updates just like this one. And also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrant shot. Bye for now.